Gregor Mendel devised the law of independent assortment based on his data with pea plants. He created pea plants heterozygous for two characters, seed shape and seed color. For both characters, the dominant alleles, spherical and yellow, came from the mother and the recessive alleles, wrinkled and green, came from the father. Mendel found that when he crossed these heterozygous plants with themselves, the offspring could be either spherical and yellow, wrinkled and yellow, spherical and green, or wrinkled and green. Therefore, he concluded the allele for seed shape was passed down independently of the allele for seed color. Does this principle of independent assortment apply to all pairs of genes? T. H. Morgan pioneered the study of the genetics of Drosophila melanogaster, the fruit fly, which remains an important organism in genetics research today. Morgan crossed Drosophila of two known genotypes for two different traits, body color and wing shape. Wild type gray body is dominant over black body. Wild type normal wing is dominant over vestigial, a very small wing. In each cross, the mother was heterozygous for both traits, and the father was homozygous for the recessive trait. Assuming that the alleles for body color and wing shape assort independently, as Mendel predicted, what would Morgan have observed when he crossed these flies? Click on the correct set of data. Mendel's law predicts equal numbers of each of the four possible types of offspring. The father always contributes a recessive allele, and the mother contributes the dominant allele 50% of the time. The dominant allele for one gene should be equally likely to pair with either the dominant or recessive allele for the other gene. However, Morgan observed something different in his fruit flies. The alleles for body color and wing shape seem to be inherited together most of the time. These results made sense when Morgan realized that the two genes are on the same chromosome, that is, they are linked. During meiosis, chromosome pairs line up at the midplane of the cell. When genes are located on different chromosomes, random chance determines which alleles line up and are transmitted together to the germ cell. This is why the traits observed by Mendel appear to be inherited independently of each other. When genes are located on the same chromosome, they do not line up randomly during meiosis. In Morgan's experiment, the recessive allele encoding black body, little b, lines up with the recessive allele for vestigial wings, little vg, because both are on the same chromosome. Similarly, the two wild-type alleles, Big B and Big VG, also stay together. The two genes are thus transmitted to the offspring as a set, rather than independently. If the genes for body color and vestigial wings are located on the same chromosome and segregate together, what phenotype should Morgan have observed in the F1 generation? Click on the correct data. If linkage were complete, Morgan's cross could only have produced gray flies with normal wings or black flies with vestigial wings. Yet this is not what he observed. Some flies were born with gray bodies and vestigial wings, and some had black bodies and normal wings. How could the gray body and vestigial wings alleles, or the black body with normal wings alleles, end up in the same cell? It is very rare that two genes are inseparably linked thanks to a complex process called recombination. Chromosomes are not unbreakable, so genes at different loci on the same chromosome do sometimes separate from one another during meiosis. After the DNA replicates during S phase, each chromosome consists of two chromatids. In prophase I, homologous chromosome pairs come together to form tetrads. At this point, the homologous chromosomes can physically exchange corresponding segments. The exchange involves only two of the four chromatids and can occur at any point along the chromosome. Both chromatids then end up with genes from both of the organism's parents. The result is two recombinant gametes from each event of crossing over. 
drag the correct labels to the gametes that will produce offspring with a parental phenotype or the recombinant phenotype. When crossing over takes place, not all offspring will have the parental phenotypes. Instead, as in Morgan's cross, recombinant offspring will appear. How often two genes recombine depends upon how close together they are on the chromosome. A chromatid exchange is more likely to occur between genes that are far apart than between genes that are close together.